Hi folks. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Hello family. Hello everyone. We're just waiting for our guests to join us. Um, so we're going to take like two to three minutes until they get here. Um, in the meantime, I would love for folks to drop in the chat their favorite fruit or vegetable of this season. <laughs> if you guys are aware of seasonal fruits, amazing. Drop it in the chat. Yes, Amanda, Rebecca. Yes, hi, Rebecca. Hey, how's it going? Good. We're, we have five people in the room right now who are here with us. I see that Amanda just joined. Um, let me give her an opportunity again. Just invited her. Oh, amazing. Yes. Awesome. Hey. Hey. Um, welcome to both of you. Thank you both so much for being here and for joining us. Um, I'm giving folks a minute to drop in the chat their favorite fruit or vegetable of the season. Do y'all have anything that comes to mind that's like your favorite seasonal produce? I have been enjoying blueberries today. Love that. Those are great. I also just had a dried fig, but I don't, that's not really seasonal. <laughs> You could tell me and I would believe you. I would believe you if you told me a fig was seasonal. So I love uh, you, I love mangoes. Mm. Yeah. Mangoes every day, all day. Delicious. Delicious. Um, well, I'm gonna let us get started. I see we have nine people here with us. Hopefully more people will join. Hello. Thank you all so much for joining this Instagram live. My name is, oh, I see a gooseberries in the chat. My name is Onyx Ramirez. I'm the Senior Communications Manager with BSF. And I'm so excited to be joined here today by two powerhouses in the food justice space, Amanda Everidge, our Community-Led Investment Committee Facilitator for BFF, and Rebecca Williams, a former pilot community member for BFF, but also an incredible community organizer of Food for the Spirit and the Buffalo Food Equity Network, amongst a bunch of other networks that are organizing for a new food system. Um, and uh, I want to share the intention for this Instagram Live, which is really to talk about collective decision making and how these different models, cooperative models, are really based in our legacy as Black folk, as people of color, and how important it is to shift power into the hands of the Black community to build wealth for us all. Really more non-traditional approaches to centering community and social justice rather than centering power in one space and placing that emphasis on like creating these spaces for our people both bfs and food for the spirit really aim to create a new food economy and system led by communities of color for communities of color so we're really excited to bring these organizations together um, and to have two folks who have such extensive experience specifically in building community and collective decision making, both of y'all here with us to lead this conversation. Um, as folks who are here may be aware or not, earlier this year, BFF announced the launch of BFF Funds 2.0, and that's our new integrated capital funds that's gonna support black farmers and food actors across the Northeast. And our investment committee at BFF is community led and has values that are grounded in our ancestral roots. So we wanna discuss, yes, how we can decentralize power and continue to do this and understand why this type of leadership is so transformative. A little disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only and is not an offer. Um, and for more information about each organization, we're gonna put in the chat later on. Um, but I'm really excited for this discussion. I'm going to introduce you both properly now. So I'm here with Amanda Everidge, whose pronouns are she and they. Um, Amanda is a seed, a, is a seed, <laughs> a creator, a facilitator, and a collaborator from the Bronx, New York. Um, uh, living on unceded Wappinger Mun Munsi Lenape land, and with over 10 years of experience in various roles 
working and growing in community organizing spaces. They bring their experiences from studying English literature at CUNY, um, training in Reggio Emilia education as a forest school teacher, uh, collaborating as a freelance artist and farming as a graduate of Farm School NYC and a pollinator at Rock Steady Farm. Yeah. Amanda is energized by working in liberatory spaces that are guided by honoring Black legacy, learning from ancestral wisdom and improvisation, and using creativity to imagine and build the future worlds we need through individual and collective empowerment. All of their work is guided by a deepening connection to process the land and the understanding that we are all creative beings. Um, so we're going to give it up for Amanda. Um, and I'm also going to introduce Rebecca, also goes by Becca Williams. Rebecca's pronouns are she and her. Rebecca is an organizer and a trainer who lives in rural central New York State. Becca is co-founder of Food for the Spirit and the Buffalo Food Equity Network. And in 2020, she joined BFF's pilot com community to help select the first cohort of Black farmers and food systems actors to receive funding from BFF and to be a bridge for Black folk in Western New York to connect with the approach and opportunities of BFF. Prior to joining BFF, Becca gained collective decision-making experience as part of a cooperative housing movement in Buffalo and as a board member of the North American Students of Cooperation, NASCO. Becca is also a lifelong communitarian, having studied intentional communities and community organizing in college and living in a cooperative household with 13 other people and her son from the time that he was seven to 11. So Becca has a lot of experience in making collective decisions. And these days, Becca continues to support collective decision-making and movement work within her organization, Food for the Spirit, as well as in the networks that Food for the Spirit supports, including the Buffalo Ac Food Equity Network, the Genesee Valley Black Farmers Collective, and the Finger Lakes Accountability Network. So thank you both so much for being here with me. I know I said a lot, and I'm excited Becca. to get into the questions um, and to hear from y'all. Uh, and the first question I would love to have both of y'all answer is really, what is your entry point to collective decision making? Where do you come to this work from? Either of y'all can go first. You want to start, Amanda? Sure, I can start us off. Um, I mean, first and foremost, it feels important to say that I'm from the Bronx. So, you know, I'm from unceded, unceded Wapping of Lindsay Lapping land, and the Bronx made me who I am and shaped me. Um, you know, we're not given a lot of resources here and we have some of the worst asthma rates in the country. And so my frame of reference for collective decision making is always rooted in being from the Bronx, being inspired by black people, being inspired by people of color from this region that are collectively pulling resources, pulling ideas and using their spirit, using their hands, using their energy to work together to create resources where there aren't um, resources being given to them. And so, yeah, the Bronx, also, um, I was a teacher for five years, a forest school teacher, and it was rooted in Reggio Emilia, which came out of fascism in Italy. So parents and families got together and created their own type of schooling that was connected to the land, to environment, um, because, yeah, they weren't getting that those resources from the government. And so also, um, I'm a facilitator. So I've done a lot of facilitation rooted around uh, ritual rooted around process and practice and interdependence when it comes to being creative, when it comes to play as a liberatory practice and tool. Um, yeah, these are the things that created me. Also, my family, you know, my family made me who I am. Um, having cousin clubs, hearing about things like that, uh, family meetings, you know, that collective building. Yeah, these are the different things that have made me who I am. That's awesome. How about you, Rebecca? Well, first of all, just appreciating that context amanda from where you came from and just all the heart and passion that you bring um to to this work and um i yeah for me um coming out of the co-op movement um from uh living in a cooperative household and even prior to that um, coming from a family who had um, spent time in intentional community with people who worked together to, um, you know, care for 
land stewards, you know, so um, there's a community just outside of um, just near where I live called the Rochester Folk Art Guild. And that community was a home away from home for me. So I grew up in the city of Buffalo, spent weekends and holidays at the Folk Art Guild. And there at the at the Guild, I was able to see um, really people putting in place systems of working together, collective um, work where like, you know, as simple as like moving a bunch of boxes from one place like to like a hundred yards away or whatever and making a long line of people and passing the boxes and everybody being just a cog in the system and working together. So seeing those kind of practices as a child and growing up in that and then I um, also had the benefit of being a part of a revolutionary school, so a public school in Buffalo called the Montessori School, where adults mm -hmm. and children were all, um, you know, respected in a in in a very tight community with a very tight culture, um, and so I got to participate in collective decision making in that school setting too back in Buffalo. So um, for me, it's just been a pretty like similar to what you said, Amanda, about your own upbringing. For me, it's been just a part of who I am and where I come from. Um, so then, just bringing that to spaces that I'm in now just seems just seems natural. That's awesome. I feel so jealous <laughs> of you guys because you're talking about the spaces that you know you can look to in your family to inspire the work that you do. And also like hearing so much connection between the both of you as like artists and educators and how important that type of power structure and all of that type of movement building has been for your work. And I'm interested, like, what was so important about having that type of structure in those spaces as artists, as educators, in your communities, and even for like a fund, a fund like BFF, like what's so important about this? Mm. Yeah, I really love hearing more about your background, Becca. Um, I didn't know we had that much crossover, so I wanna talk to you more now <laughs> about stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. When I was thinking about, you know, preparing for this conversation, I thought some of the things I'm going to mention are going to be about food and farming, but I'm gathering information and knowledge from Black creation across so many different realms and spheres of life. It's jazz music. It's, um, you know, my neighbors and how they talk to each other. It's, it's farming. Yeah, it's, it's food. There's, there's so many different places where I'm getting information from and synthesizing it together to understand what it means to be in community with other people um, and what it means to be interdependent. And so I feel like it was really important for me when I was younger to see my family be artists, start programs, gather people literally on a corner and say, what do you do? What do you do? Let's do it together. You know, let's celebrate each other's differences yeah. and also use your energy to do something because you can, you know? Um, so yeah, I think it really informed the fact that I saw people who had power individually and collectively it got even stronger. Mm. Mm. Well, I just want to start by saying the being a part of the uh, pilot community, the investment um, committee, BFF's investment, uh, first investment committee was so bad. Yes. Am I allowed to say that on yeah. Instagram? Like, hey, y'all. Um, <laughs> it was so awesome. Just um, the way BFF uplifts Black people, Black art, Black love, Black solidarity, Black just, you know, centering our ancestors and all the richness of the culture. Um, I just learned, learned so much. And, you know, I, I start a lot of times when I'm talking about why I started Food for the Spirit and kind of the inspiration for the Buffalo Food Equity Network, I talk a lot about how uh, being a Black mixed race woman in the city of Buffalo, which is one of the most segregated cities in the country, um, there was a very limited understanding of Blackness. Um, and I got to be a part of something in BFF that was um, a lot bigger than what I had seen in um, Buffalo and in the circles um, 
that I had moved in in Buffalo. And there's definitely other organizations around the country that are doing this kind of thing as well. But BFF is doing it really well. And um, so just being a part of that was just really um, just an awesome opportunity. So yes, I did bring a lot of um, you know, the collective decision making and the cooperative experience I gained prior to joining the BFF um, investment committee. But um, once there, I got to meet so many amazing people and just be totally pumped up by the beauty of blackness and a way that um, I just feel like so many more people need. So I just wanted to like give that shout out and just say how meaningful that was um, for me uh, being a part of the investment committee. And gosh, I like got so excited about that saying that that I forgot what the question was. It's okay. What was the question? You answered you answered, <laughs> which is like, why is this so important in our lives? Oh and my gosh. Yeah. One thing that came up for both of y'all just now is the need to like build this intentionally for ourselves. So like to seek that out. And I think Becca hearing you say it was badass, like it was badass because all of y'all sought that out and created that space and were able to like use your life experiences to come together and literally come together instead of coming apart and like trying to do things in a disjointed way. So shout outs are to y'all, um, <laughs> made it so badass. I'd love to know a little bit more about what that process was like. So like what was really important to make those collective decisions and Amanda for you as y'all are making those decisions now what are some things that are like okay that's part one this is part two do you want me to start Amanda sure yeah so um I'm so so curious to hear how you're going to answer this question too because obviously you came on after I had been with BFF um, as part of the pilot community. So I'm curious whether things have changed. Um, but I would definitely say one thing that is, was really important for us in the pilot, pilot um, community, excuse me, um, which I think is important in every um, de collective decision-making space is relationship and trust and getting to know folks. Um, and there was a lot of that intentionally done, you know, of encouraging us to share with each other at the beginning of calls, throughout the calls, you know, so, and we were all virtual. Um, I'm assuming you probably still are since BFF is, you know, the community is spread all over. Um, you know, we were across New York State. I know BFF has grown to be throughout the Northeast. Um, so, you know, several states. So, but even with that, you know, the, um, just the intentional time and space that was given to developing relationship. And I think it's challenging to be in a space. I mean, even when you have the relationships, the, all the different personalities. I mean, I'm somebody who is like, land the plane, right? Like, what are we talking about? Like, what's the decision on the table? Like, tell us what it is, you know, so I'm like that and I can feel like, in like internally, my anxiety, like going up, like, if you know, the time is going by and people are kind of talking and talking and I'm like, and I've learned over the years that that's not helpful, like, in a group and in a community. And when we're like, you know, working through trying to, you know, trust each other and understand each other. There are so many, when you're in a space, that collective space, what is powerful about it is the collective wisdom. But so then what is necessary is to take those breaths and like allow for each person's individuality and uniqueness, their unique thought processes, their experiences and their perspectives to come and, you know, congeal and like, wrap their their heads around whatever it is we're talking about in the way that they do so that you know was challenging and also awesome once we could really hear each other um you know so yeah i think that is really important is learning how to be patient with the process and building trust and understanding for different folks yeah that makes so much sense and i'm also hearing like 
giving people the space to discover what they even feel and like what's even true for them at that time and how do you do that is with that patience i see someone in the chat said that's a powerful message i'm guilty i think we're all learning <laughs> We're all here, so thank you for being here. How about you, Amanda? What comes up for you as like really important? Yeah, what you just described actually, um, like hearing you talk, Becca, and then how you're saying, Onyx, the learning piece, right, and the person in the chat. I think that learning together in the space, so that relationship building, but also having space to process and learn together in real time is really important because there's so many different ways that we learn. There's different lived experiences in the room. There's different ideas and opinions and thoughts. And I feel like creating space for that um, real time processing together, realizing we are building something now, you know, no one has all the answers, no one's perfect. Um, and we are figuring this out together. There's something that I think creates connective tissue in that processing together. And I think as well, having space to um, uplift people to have them be seen and heard, have their thoughts and opinions be a part of the process. Is something that I'm always trying to incorporate more and more and deeper into the spaces that I facilitate, because I think that's why we're here. I think we're here to believe in each other and we live in systems that, you know, would have us not believe in ourselves and each other. So any chance we get to do that, even if we're making mistakes, even if we're figuring it out, if we're trying, I think seeing and believing in each other is a big part of the process of collective decision making and and building something together. Thank you for that. Rebecca, is there anything else you want to add before we move on to the next question? No, just really appreciating the collective wisdom in this space. Mm. So just listening to Amanda and hearing it yeah. and for sure. I think my next question is really around, okay, so it sounds like it's super important to have this mutual respect, mutual understanding. I love the way you put it, Amanda, like, to build connective tissue sometimes you got to break things down and really get closer and, and get to that space what do you do when you reach an impasse when y'all are like no we're not agreeing whether it's big whether it's small what happens mm. yeah i can share we can also go back and forth because i think this is right also a part of it figuring it out because we're figuring this out in real time mm -hmm. um <laughs> i think pausing is a part of that I think setting up things before you even get to those positions, right? So when they happen, you figure out what to do, but also you can't always prepare for everything that's gonna come up. Um, I think having, yeah, space to pause and reflect on what's happening, self-reflection and also group reflection and space to, space to, um, they're having some space right now. Um, <laughs> space to figure out what's actually happening, right? Like what is creating this impasse? and what are the goals what are our common goals what are our individual goals i feel like it goes back to that people wanting to be seen and heard you know piece where are we having space for that so then we can honor each other and also what are we doing right so it's both it's like how do we take care of ourselves and each other in the space and also what is the goal but yeah having space to stop to pause to reflect to shift and change things if, if need be um to to apologize if need be right um to acknowledge i made a mistake if need be right i think i think we live in systems that want us to keep going really fast so that we don't have that time to really build the things that will last having something be fast doesn't mean it'll last long it means it's done but i don't think we're ever really done right like we're living and breathing this is creation life is creation so I don't think it's about getting it done. I think it's about what are we doing and how are we doing it and figuring out how to keep in keep in process and in like grounded presence with that. Thank you. And someone in the chat says something really similar about like, we're all at different stages of action. And that's really important because not everybody is gonna be ready to move when you are. And so I'm thinking about that in relation to what you just said of like, we're trying to arrive, we're trying to get to some place, but what if we're never there? What if we're always there and we're always figuring that out? <laughs> Rebecca, I wanna hear from you. Yeah, this is such a juicy, <laughs> deep question. And I feel like, I mean, the impasse, right? So, I mean, if I think what you were saying, Amanda, there were so many things that resonated. Um, I think having, remembering like kind of the concept of the goal and 
thinking about principles. So um, I th think, you know, BFF has a set of principles and those are some things that are meant to guide the process, right? Um, and I think in any collective decision making process, the first thing the group needs to do is um, ensure that there's collective understanding and agreement around the principles, right? So I think that is key um, and that can help um, in, in moving through an impasse. I, I also really, I was actually thinking pause too. That was like the first thing that came to my mind and then you said it and I was like, yes, pause. Like um, there's a saying that I've heard that's, um, I know I've heard, I think I've heard Leah Penniman say it. I don't know exactly where it first came from, but be like, be okay with unfinished business. Like you don't have to leave this meeting with everything figured out. And, you know, I mean, I think it's similar, like even in relationship where like, if you're having an argument one night, maybe like give it some space, like rest on it, you know, just, try to like set the argument aside for a minute and come back the next day after you've slept, you know? Um, so similarly with a group of people who are in relationship with each other, pausing is okay. And, you know, I'm hearing in a lot of, um, you know, movement spaces, you know, the, the pause, like the access pause of like allowing people who process at different speeds or in different ways to catch up. I guess we could think of it in that way too. Like maybe an overnight or a week or however long is okay to pause and come back to whatever the issue was and the question on the table, you know? So that can also, I think, help a group move through an impasse. Um, and I think the last thing I was thinking of is one of the most important things for us as humans is relationships, right? So. Um, I think going back to your point again, Amanda, about like, what is the most important thing in this? It's the relationships that we have with each other, that we're respecting each other. We're trying to really understand where each other is coming from. And then from there, okay, we need to bring our self-interest to the table. We need to bring our, you know, radical self-care slash community care to the table. I think, you know, I'm going to, I was just talking to somebody about that self-interest piece and as an organizer that you have the spectrum of selfish to selfless and self-interest is in the middle where you're bringing yourself to the community. Mm -hmm. And in that same way in the collective decision-making process, you know, making sure that you're not being selfless and not speaking for what you know is in your heart and what your principles are that you feel the group should be you know, staying in line with, but also hearing a bit of like, you know, what, you know, not being selfish. It's not about you. It's about the community, right? So. Mm, yeah. What's coming up for me is this thing that I do, which is sometimes feel like everyone else knows better than I do because my experiences for some reason are not as good, not as valid, not as real. And it just, the self-interest is why you are there, is to bring yourself because your experiences are so valid. So I really appreciate you saying that and it makes me want to speak. <laughs> um, I, I would also love to hear y'all speak a little bit about your legacy because both of y'all mentioned that this is in your families, in your communities. Who are some leaders that y'all look to in movement and space, either personally or in history that you're drawing from when you think about like, okay, I'm gonna be this person. Mm. Yeah, I can start us off. Um, and I just love hearing you speak, Becca, and like reflecting on everything. Um, yeah, I feel like I learn a lot from you every time we're in space together. Um, Cause you're so, I feel like you embody a lot of the things we're talking about. Cause you're like, what's the goal, but also, are you good, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just wanted to honor and uplift that. Um, you know, I I think about a lot of people, I think about, right, like Fannie Lou Hamer, I think about George Washington Carver, um, I think about these people that are standouts, that are ancestors that are leading the way, have led the way for us, right? I also think about the people that are currently doing the work, 
um, that we don't even know about sometimes. You know, I think about the woman in my mom's building who knows everything in the building, and she's the one you go to. I think about, you know, the teacher at the school that's staying late, um, that gives their lunch to their student. I think about the fact that, yes, we honor these ancestors that have paved the way for us and have, you know, put these issues in a larger context, and all of the people that don't get their roses while they're here doing the work now. Um, yeah, I think about uh, Hattie Carthen a lot. Shout out to Hattie Carthen in Brooklyn, um, to that, that community garden. She was a woman who she was able to fix up a whole block in bed based on saving a tree, a magnolia tree that's still there. And that story stands out to me because she was one person, but she needed the whole block. You know, everyone come together to save this tree. And the garden is still there. They're still doing programming, still educating. Um, shout out to Farmer Jan, who's, you know, stewarding a lot of that work now at the garden. Um, I think about connecting the timeline, like who was in the past, who's here now, who are we building up for the future? The young people that are going to be leading this work, you know, I feel like it can't be in isolation. That interdependence across generations is a big part of it. Um, yeah, those are some people who will stand out to me. Yeah, because young people will be knowing too, so I appreciate you thinking that. They do know. They know. <laughs> I feel like we all know when we're younger and that information is disrupted and is taken away. But they got the fire, you know? We need the spark and the fire of the young people. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Becca? Yeah. yeah, well, on that note, I do want to shout out my young friend, Brie Hassan. I had a wonderful conversation with her earlier today. Brie um, is just somebody who is back in Buffalo and is doing like the deep work of like working through heart issues, like in terms of like painful day to day stuff. And like, I just, you know, am like respecting. Um, her in this moment and that's what i feel called to say um so really appreciating that young energy as well and just um really like respect yes respecting the youth i think there's um and actually it's something that i can bring back to bff as well just that um you know seeing the way that olive um has moved or melanie has moved in terms of establishing bff as an organization and the um you know uplifting the importance of self-care and um and that patience and the humility while also like being just a strong like badass and like unapologetic and I'm gonna do this right and i saw that in my young friend brie today um and i've seen that in you know your leaders at bff um and then for me like i i really appreciate and respect the connection to my own ancestors um that has been really important for me in this work and you know i started founding food for the spirit back in 2018 when i was traveling the country trying to connect to places where my ancestors where my black ancestors um had lived even though they are no longer there just trying to connect with the place the environment the spirit um, the nature where they were. So, you know, um, behind me on the wall is a picture of my great grandfather, James Henry Warner, um, who is, uh, who lived in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Um, and my older sister's actually been down in Harrisburg at a cemetery there, um, Lincoln Cemetery, which is a black cemetery in Harrisburg, which, you know, I, this I'm learning from her just how the cemeteries are cemeteries that hold our ancestors are just you know in disrepair and it's just so sad and there's so much work to do there so she's been down there raising money for that cemetery and going in with her family and actually like you know doing the work of like paul of like brushing off the headstones so she's there with james henry almost every weekend down in harrisburg pennsylvania with saving our ancestors legacy so 
um, just, you know, grateful for my ancestors and that, um, you know, here he is planting a garden back there. He had a community garden spot. So for me, that was important to know that even that my connection to food and food access and food justice and gardens comes from my people, you know, so I didn't know him. I never met him, but I, and I didn't know that before I started Food for the Spirit, but there he is like, you know, with his hand in the dirt squatting like at his garden plot. And so um, just giving a lot of thanks for ancestors and, you know, the legacy that they've left just which I am. Yes. And I think too, like, well, one, shout outs to James Henry for the life and labor that he put into this universe and for all of that is now within you and he knows you you know so i'm really really thankful for you sharing that and like you are all embodying a badassness from before too like that's why young people be knowing because they be remembering that's within all of y'all and i think like it really has me thinking about like what do our ancestors want from us like do y'all take time to, to sit with that in these collective spaces too i, I feel like feel like yeah right mm -hmm. yeah i love hearing about your family becca um because yeah so much of what i do too is is really asking them for guidance and i think too a lot of collective decision making a lot of what we do with bff is we're not starting things completely from scratch we're building legacy we're continuing knowledge and wisdom and yeah even in the meetings i call in ancestors i i call in the land ancestors from the land i'm like which crop is helping us in this meeting today what medicine do we need shout out to this person in the last meeting i had um, a quote from gwendolyn brooks so it's you know it's not about us doing things on our own we're we're here in this you know um time doing the work and what are we learning from to give us the energy that continued energy um, a poem I always think about is Sonia Sanchez and her talking about fire, right? Like you have fire, you pass it on, you pass it on, you give it to someone else. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what the ancestors do, right? They give us the energy to keep going and we're going to be ancestors, right? So what energy are we leaving behind for who's coming next? You know? Mm -hmm. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ahead, Rebecca. This is the energy y'all are giving me, so I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> we doing it we doing it <laughs> um was there anything you wanted to add i wasn't sure if i interrupted you back in no oh, just yeah. feeling just uh just bubbling over with just just a gratitude thank you um we are almost wrapping up i want to leave five minutes at the end for q a so for the folks that are here start thinking about your questions maybe we can answer it live and if not maybe we'll answer it after but um, lastly, I would love to know specifically as it relates to BFF and this idea of like building community wealth, like what does that look like in practice? So what are some steps that people and organizations can take to shift that power and build that wealth? I'll start because uh, I, I want to hear Amanda close us off with this one too, but um you know, there is so much to be said in the personal is the political and also in the work that we each have to do in ourselves. Like, you know, again, just shouting out to my friend Brie and the conversation I had with her earlier today, like, in movement space, some of the most important work that we can do is with ourselves. And that has to be the start before we do any kind of collective decision making work. I mean, you can I mean, you can do both. I, I, I'll contradict myself like you can get started, but it is always going to come back to you and whether or not you have done the work. And I am constantly reminding myself that because it is hard this work right? It is hard. And it is beautiful when we do it well. But you know, each day and each month and like, you know, sometimes it takes a year where we're like, in like a stuck spot, you know, and I'm in the midst of starting a new organization, I've got a new like team of 
of staff folks and you know coworkers and colleagues on my food for the spirit team then we have the buffalo food equity network and all the amazing people in the buffalo food equity network who are working hard at what they're doing and we're trying to be a network and figure out how we work together it's not easy you know like it it takes lots of moments of patience and trying to understand each other and trying to work out how we want to best do things and and it and it's sometimes i see some ugly in myself and i gotta try to back myself up and say what do i gotta do to do this right how do i gotta get right to show up in the way that i really want to show up what are the principles what's most important to me at the end of the day so that i am bringing the the beauty that i want to see in the world right and it's hard and most days you know maybe i don't got it and but then i hope i have it a lot of days and i just keep trying right so that's going back to the personal mm -hmm. yeah i think i think what you what you embody becca and like everything they're sharing is intention and i feel like intention is really guiding a lot of what you're asking about onyx um i think that you know community wealth building is so many things i think it's yes it's money and it's financial it's also it's food it's land it's access to all types of resources it's community right and like what is community like dissecting that being able to break that down what do any of these things mean to us not just saying the word but figuring it out and shifting and rephrasing and changing things as we need to um i think it's safety right i learn a lot from from the trans community and the issues that they're dealing with because I feel like their safety has a lot to do with all of our safety. It's gathering information and resources and research from so many places and understanding that every part of our life is something that it has to do with our wealth and has to do with something that um that needs attention, needs needs empowerment, needs care and um yeah, it's I think it's everything around us and figuring out how to be interdependent with those things, how to share those things because we're not in isolation it it doesn't that's it's a it doesn't happen you know we we need each other and there's no way around that the land needs us we need the land all of it you know we're all interwoven all the beings yes. sing hearts thank you both so so much for being here and for answering all these questions in these last couple of minutes do we have any questions from the community things that folks want to know any questions perhaps around like how do we shift power what are some spaces that are important that black farmers need access to or that our communities need access to that's a question for me that i'm thinking about like how do i as an everyday person begin to not only reflect on myself and my personal power and what i have to bring but where can i go and like how do i explore that mm. Well, I mean, I'm going to just shout out some of the spaces. So, um for Black folks on the call, um if you're in New York State, Black Farmers United New York State. So, we are learning, practicing, actually doing um, you know, advocacy policy change. We are shifting resources and power into the hands of black farmers and food actors in New York state through Black Farmers United. So that is one real place where policy advocacy work is happening. Um land access, shout out knee folk, right? So another northeast group. So for again, for folks who identify as people of color, um indigenous, latinx, um asian, uh black folks everyone who anybody who identifies as a person of color um northeast farmers of color land trust is shifting um you know land access into our hands so join that network um the folk uh online of course bff i mean you're on here like bff like you, if y'all are not signed up for bff's e newsletter and like to be part of the community like get on it i figured you all were but 
for those of you listening, like if you're not like <laughs> part of the BFF, like, you know, bandwagon, e-newsletter, all that good stuff, get on it. So, but I figure if you're here, you are. Um, so yeah, there. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, just, so those are just some real like practical, like, organizations um i mean there's a lot of other organizations we could we could shout out yes I'll leave it at thank you for those becca amanda can you tell us a little bit about the offerings from bff so the rapid response fund and the investment committee generally for folks who may you know be hearing about these things for the first time yeah so we have the regular fund which is funding the new businesses for the next cycle we have the rapid response fund which is funding emergencies for farmers and food actors in the northeast um, we have technical assistance um, there's always offerings and new things to learn about on our instagram and the newsletter yes sign up for the newsletter um and yeah i would say also your community garden where you are, start where you are. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be, you know, as small as you looking up a word or looking up the history of where something came from. I looked up the history of so many things and found out, you know, it came from this community or this person and I had no idea it was a part of my ancestry, right? So start where you are, go to your community garden, find that space, ask questions, get to know people, work with the land. The land will tell you things. It will lead you to where you gotta go. Period. Um, thank you both so much for this time. My associate Michael Lee is here. I would love for her to drop in the chat the links. So the link to blackfarmerfund.org to learn more about our investment process, foodforthespirit.org. Follow Food for the Spirit, y'all, at F4TS yes. underscore New York. Yes, follow Black Farmer Fund. Sign up for Knee Folks Offerings. Sign up for Soul Fire Farm, all these amazing organizations and all that is that they're doing. Um, and yeah, learn more about how to engage, how to be that agent of change. Um, yes, and shout outs to the Buffalo Equity Network, the Genesee Valley Black Farmers Collective, and the Finger Lakes Accountability Network. Um, and thank you both so much for your time. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks y'all. for having us, Bye. Onyx. Yay. All right. Good to talk to you both. Thanks, Amanda. <laughs> so good to see you. Also, Becca, you got a shout out from BRU Apothecary. Yeah. Becca, great shot. Oh, Brew Apothecary. Hey, Amanda. Ferguson. <laughs> Nima's our, uh, the director of our Buffalo Food Equity Network. Hey, Nima. So, so good to be I with you Amanda in the chat. Hey, Amanda. Yeah. Amanda. Root Work Herbals. Yes, shout out to Root Work Herbals. Thank you all so much for being here. Have a great evening. All right. Peace, y'all. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>